Hey guys, Ben here, 3dgladiator.com. In this last part of the ZBrush interface tutorial series, I will share some general tips and tricks on how to make the ZBrush experience as smooth as possible. So let's get started. First, let me draw the head to the canvas again. Enter the edit mode by hitting the T key on the keyboard. And the very first thing I do here is I set the preview shadow intensity and the preview shadow length to the lowest value. So this would be 16 for the length and zero for the object shadow intensity. And that makes the shadow areas a little bit brighter and the details are a little bit easier to see. I'm not very happy with the look of the eyes. So before we proceed with the other tips and tricks, let me quickly assign a different material to them. So I go to the subtool sub palette here, move down to the eyes, select the eyes, isolate them. You can hit the solo button here. I have set the shortcut key and then I go to the material tab, choose a different material, toy plastic. And um, next I make sure that the settings are set from material RGB to material only. And then I go to the color palette here and click on fill object. And what this does is it assigns the currently selected material to the activated object here. So if I exit the solo mode and change the material back to metal, you can see that the head mesh has the metal material assigned to it and the eyes have the toy plastic material assigned to them with a very nice and sharp highlight. And that looks much better than what we had before. The thing is, if I now assign a different material like the matcap red wax material, you can see that it is only applied to the head mesh and not the eyes because we previously assigned the toy plastic material to the eyes. If you would like to change that, you can select the eyes in the subtool menu here, isolate them by hitting the solo key and instead of selecting any of these materials here I go with the flat color standard material and that's a special one because it does not apply the material to the object but it removes the previously assigned one. So I make sure that the material channel is checked here and then I click on fill object in the color palette again and now I can choose any material and it gets assigned to the entire mesh here including the eyes. I now quickly reassign the toy plastic material again and click on fill object and change the main material back to metal and switch to the head mesh in the sub tool palette. I've just noticed that some of my custom palettes are missing and that happens sometimes when you launch ZBrush and you can bring them back by go to the preference tab open the config sub palette here and click on restore custom user interface. So that brings my custom palettes and sub palettes back. Then I make sure that the head mesh is on the highest subdivision level before I go to the layer sub palette and bake all the layers. If I zoom in close, you will notice that the mesh is pretty dense. It consists of a little bit more than 10 million polygons. You can check that by taking a look at the active point count here. It says a little bit more than 10 million polygons. You can also check that by hovering over the sub tool in the sub tool palette and you get some information about uh, polygons and point count. And you will probably also notice that while I'm moving the object around, ZBrush displays the mesh in a slightly lower resolution to make transformation faster. And this is great if you're dealing with uh, very heavy meshes but sometimes it can be also annoying, especially when you try to focus on small surface details. Like everything in ZBrush, we can adjust this function in the preference palette. So I go to preference and under the performance sub palette, there is a slider called quick transformation threshold. This is a slider where you can adjust the behavior. And if you are using ZBrush on a state of the art workstation, you can usually set the slider to the maximum. I do not work on a state-of-the-art machine, but I still set it to the maximum to show you what happens. So let's crank it up to 50. And when you transform the model now, the level of details remains pretty much consistent. Actually, and it's probably pretty hard to see here, ZBrush still steps down one subdivision level when I uh, move the model on the canvas. 
but it's already a lot easier to focus on the details. And of course, this works also the other way around. If I go to the preference tab again on the performance and set this quick transformation threshold slider to zero, ZBrush displays a low resolution version when uh, I transform the mesh. I open the preference tab and set it back to 20 again. Then I want you to take a look at the cursor. So let me make mine a little bit bigger. I press the S key on the keyboard to open up the slider here and I can move the slider up and down to decrease or increase the brush size. In standard mode, the brush follows the curvature of the surface if I hover over it or when I apply a brush stroke. This feature was introduced a few years ago. Before that, the cursor wasn't moving in 3D space. You can still adjust that by going to the preference tab I close the performance sub palette and open up the edit palette. And here is this button located align cursor to surface. So when this is turned off, the cursor does not follow the curvature of the surface, but of course still behaves the same way as before, except that it's now not wobbling around that much anymore. I always turn this function off to work with a steady cursor. I turn this function on again. I have set a shortcut key for this. And now the cursor follows the curvature of the surface again. I want to demonstrate a little trick here. Some of you might not know when you work with the move brush, it transforms the mesh in the direction of the brush stroke. So I pick the move brush and let me lower the subdivision level. I go down to level four. And when I apply the brush stroke here or the move brush, it moves the surface into the direction of the brush stroke. So if I move it to the right, it gets transformed to the right. If you press and hold the Alt key while using the move brush, the surface normals under the brush are evaluated and you can move the geometry along these surface normals. So it looks something like this. And that's a very handy function that I use all the time in combination with the move brush. Press and hold Alt and move the cursor up and down or left and right and the surface gets uh, transformed along the surface normals. Speaking of brushes, I'm sure you have noticed that my brush menu here consists of a few custom brushes. Uh, they are included in the interface package you can download on 3dgladiator.com and I uh, particularly want to show you my custom flatten brush. So this is basically a tuned version of the standard flatten brush that comes with ZBrush. I've created it years ago when the clay tube and the clay builder brush were not yet available and it was mainly inspired by the flatten brush in Mudbox. I still use it for all of my organic modeling as it basically flattens the surface while it simultaneously adds or removes volume. I will quickly demonstrate what this looks like and for this reason I exit the edit mode and clear the canvas by hitting Control N on the keyboard. Then I go to the tool palette and choose a sphere primitive, draw it on the canvas, enter the edit mode again, enable polyframe, turn it into a poly mesh 3D and subdivide it a couple of times by hitting Control D on the keyboard. And you can see that the active points here are increasing one more and now we reach the two million mark and I start with the standard flatten brush and it basically does what the name implies, it flattens the surface. My custom brush on the other hand also flattens the surface but it pushed it in or out at the same time and it works great for developing organic shapes. So that's the the standard one and then I have a fine one with a pretty low intensity value and I have also a negative one that pushes in the surface and I mainly use it to slowly build up organic shapes. I want to show you what the settings for this brush are. So let me quickly draw another sphere to the canvas, turn it into a polymesh 3D again, add a couple of subdivisions and uh, choose the flattened brush one more time and apply a 
few brush strokes just to see what it does. And then I move to the brush palette, make sure that the flatten brush is selected and click on clone to create a copy that gets added at the very end of the list here. And the flatten brush is named flatten five. We will change the name later on when we are done with the adjustments here and save it as a separate brush. The very first thing we need to adjust is this brush modifier slider in the modifier sub palette. And this slider adds a second effect to every brush. So if I choose the standard brush, for instance, and set the value to uh, minus 100 and draw a stroke on the surface, you can see that it slightly inflates the brush. If I set it back to zero, we get back our standard brush. And if I move it up to a positive 100, it ends up in a pinch effect. So that's true only for the standard brush. For all other brushes except the standard brush, the setting adds an elevation effect. So a positive value adds volume to the surface and a negative value subtracts. I choose the flatten brush here again and set this to 100. And as you can see, the behavior already slightly changes and the flatten brush starts to add volume to the surface. Of course, the effect is still not strong enough. And in this case, you can crank up the intensity. I set it to the maximum and try it again. And it looks already a little bit better, but the result is still not what I'm looking for. So let me set it back to 25. And what I can do here to control the strength is I go to the depth sub palette and adjust this embed value here. So I can move the circle up and down. And for elevation, I set it to a positive value. Let's try 15 and I start again. And now this looks a lot better. It still seems to react a little bit strange uh, as it tends to inflate the surface underneath the brush. And we can solve this issue by going to the sample sub palette here and disable the build up feature. So what this does is it prevents the brush from sampling the surface under the cursor while I'm applying the brush stroke. In a deactivated state, it behaves a lot better. I also enable these fast samples and that's basically a leftover from ZBrush version 3.1. And with this activated, the brush behaves a little bit more like they did in previous versions of ZBrush. And last but not least, I also adjust the alpha. I usually use uh, a square alpha here and start with alpha 28. When I draw on the surface, you can see that the edge of the alpha is still visible and we can get rid of this effect by opening up the alpha palette and setting the blur value here in the modify sub palette to 15. And that blurs out the edges of the alpha and results in a much smoother brush stroke. But I usually don't do that because it means an additional calculation step for ZBrush. So I choose alpha 28, make sure that the blur value is set back to uh, the initial zero. And then I export the alpha and bring it to Photoshop, apply a Gaussian blur, import it back into ZBrush and use it as a standard alpha for my custom flattened brush. When we are done with the setup, we can create a custom icon for our new brush and save it in the startup folder. You have two options here again. I switch to the brush palette and click on select icon. And now ZBrush lets you choose different image formats or you can start with a brush icon sample file that comes with ZBrush and is located in the uh, C startup folder here. So that's the um, ZBrush directory. And in the C startup folder is a, another folder called brush presets that contains a file with the name brush icon samples. And if you open this in Photoshop, you 
get something like this. The brush icon here is placed on a separate layer and you can basically insert here whatever you want. I also just made a screenshot of a C tool in ZBrush and copy paste it to a new layer in Photoshop. And the second option here is to use the currently activated tool and make a screenshot of it directly in ZBrush and use it as a tool icon. So let me quickly delete the lower subdivision levels and trim our sphere. And when I place it on the canvas now, like so, and alt click on select icon, the currently activated tool gets used as a brush icon here. So it doesn't matter how big or small it is or where exactly I place it on the canvas. If I R click on select icon, ZBrush takes it as an icon for the currently activated brush. Before I save the brush, I can edit the brush credit. So I go to create and click on edit brush credits and you can give it a name here and insert your email address or website link in the second row. And then I click on save as and save the brush again in the ZBrush installation directory in the brush presets folder where also my other custom brushes are located. You can now, of course, also place the new icon directly on the interface. So I activate Enable Customize again and uh, control R click on the uh, brush tool here and place it somewhere on the interface. And then you are done. While I'm having this tool drawn on the canvas, I would also like to mention that I'm not using the standard smooth brush. I use a slightly tuned version here. It is called Smooth Stronger. And uh, this one is also located in the lightbox. So if you hit the comma key on your keyboard, lightbox opens. And if you go to the uh, brush tab and search for the smooth folder, the smooth stronger brush is located here. And you can of course also slightly adjust the default smooth brush to turn it into a smooth stronger. So select the default smooth brush and go to the brush palette here, scroll down to the smooth brush modifier and adjust this weighted smooth mode. If you hover over the slider, the little info box pops up and you can see that if you set this value to one, you change the smooth mode to smooth stronger. For more information, control click on the slider to show the big info box with a detailed description of all the settings. So let's set it to one and start smoothing and it behaves a little bit different than the standard brush and reacts a little bit faster, especially when you set the value to 100 here. And it's great for smoothing surfaces that consist of a lot of triangles. Speaking of triangles, if I continue smoothing the edge here, you can see that the result could be a little bit cleaner. And that's uh, mainly because of the irregular uh, mesh in this area. So if I activate the polyframe and zoom in close, you can see that the edge consists of a lot of triangles that were created by using the trim brush before. And there exists a little trick where you can force the smooth brush to use a different algorithm for smoothing uh, the surface. And it works like this. So you shift click on your keyboard to enter the smooth mode. And then you apply the stroke and while you do that, you let shift go. So shift click, then I let shift go and the smooth brush enters a different smoothing algorithm and creates slightly better results. So that works always great whenever you try to smooth out surfaces that consists of uh, a lot of triangles. Let me show you how this works on this edge here. I first apply the brush in stand-up mode. It's not that bad here, but you can still see some uh, small bumps. And then I repeat the process by pressing the shift key and letting shift go and the bumps disappear. All right, guys, that's it for this tutorial series. Hit the subscribe button if you would like to see more and click the link in the description to download my ZBrush interface files and custom brushes. On 3dgladiator.com, I also explain how to install the files. Happy ZBrushing.